All right, everybody, let's dive into this one here. Uh, we're going to be focusing on color correction today. Before we do that, as usual, make sure you go to the Big League Film School, uh, dot com website and hover over right here and click Yes, Send Me My Video. Enter in your email and then press this free instant access and we will send you the three awesome tips that Jerome Keat, one of our first Cine Summit presenters, uh, amazing cinematographer, he's going to tell you some three essential things that you got to do every time you go out there and shoot uh, so that you can rock and roll like the best. And like I've uh, been saying before, these are things that everybody, no matter how good you are, this is part of the, the process. You got to got to do these things. Okay, let's dive into it. What we're going to talk about today is uh, some color correction. Now, a lot of people would 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 say that, you know, what's that got to do with the actual cinematography? But today, with the ability of uh, getting a look after you shoot, you know, it's so it's, the ability is, is there and so strong and, and, and at everybody's fingertips that basically a cinematographer today should be uh, getting used to doing this and should be uh, controlling this aspect. Otherwise, you shoot something beautiful and then somebody else edits it and makes it look like something else that you didn't even intend for it to look like. Uh, so wh what this is going to be based on, it's going to be based on basically one of our presenters at the Cine Summit. Uh, here is the VIP Big League Cine Summit site where you can see the old ones and it's actually from the 2013 Cine Summit. Uh, one of our guys, uh, Camille Moray. Now, if you see his stuff on Vimeo, I mean, the probably the main comments he gets on all his videos is about color correction. Wow, what did you do, and etc. So we had him on, and he gives us a full on, like almost an hour of his process of color correcting using After Effects. So I put some of that to use, and that is what we're going to be discussing today. So let's dive right in. Okay. So before we do that, I always uh, forget to actually let you guys watch the video. So here we go. Let me hit play on that sucker and you guys watch it and uh, then we'll talk about it. Okay, so here we are in Premiere where I did the edit. You can see all these different layers here, uh, the main layer and then a couple of the you know other layers where I, where I uh, add some more B-roll and some cuts on top. Now, what I do here, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm fairly new to this process, so I'm happy to hear anybody's uh, advice and what the, how they go about it. But what I've done here is I basically, what I would do is I would select this, you know, all the, all these pieces here. And I'll right click on it and and choose down at the bottom replace with after effects composition what that does is it will all this will disappear and turn into one line like that and that is basically referencing an after effects project so the minute that that'll disappear this will show up in its in its place and then you'll get sent to after effects and basically this is what you're going to have so if you look off to the left, here are here is every piece of that puzzle that was in Premiere. Uh, so like for example, you have this uh, you know long take that's kind of down here at the bottom, and it spaces out all the different uh, all the different pieces, right? So like this would be the first first shot right there, and then afterwards you you probably if I zoom in here, 
you can see, if for those of you who are familiar with After Effects, here's the first take, and then there's nothing right here, right? There's nothing after it. There should be something right after it. If I scroll up and down, you'll see that there it is down at the bottom, right there. There's the next take, and that goes on and on for a little bit. And then on top of that take is another, this, this shot right here. Now, that shot is, if you go down, directly above this shot, because that's how it is in Premiere. You will see that I have a shot here and then another one right on top. So it's it's taking all that information and it's putting it into After Effects. After Effects works a little bit differently, so if you're not used to it, you'll have to get used to that. So there it is, just the shots laid out, you know, on a left to right fashion on the timeline right there. Now what I do, and again, this is basically, I'm, I'm, I'm I wouldn't even say borrowing, I'm stealing it straight from uh, Camille Moray, uh, if I said the name right, I hope. So what I do is I will start to create uh, a lot of layers. Now I'm not going to go into it in depth. I just wanted you to see how I do it and you know leave it to you to do your own magic and to create the details uh, of that look. Let me get this so you can see the whole shot. There we go. So let's let's see how it. Let me turn some of this stuff off uh, so that you can see what's going on, and then we will go layer by layer. Uh, okay, so usually the first thing that I will do is actually create a vignette, uh, you know, because it's just nice. You want to kind of uh, get the focus uh, on the subject. So there's two layers here, and each one is a little bit different uh, vignette. And if I turn the opacity on, you'll see I don't have any either of them at 100%. I'm going to turn both of those off so you see what they're doing. Uh, they're basically two solid layers of black just on top and then you do a, a cutout and you uh, keep some black around the edges right so let me turn one on and it's probably very subtle that one uh, let's see here why is that so subtle so let's see here there's that one and then there's the nope sorry I got yeah there's that one and here is the second one I see I have a third one here. Oh, that's for, for a separate track. So anyways, we'll focus on these two. I have two vignettes there, and that's the first thing that I do. Created that. It kind of helps him to pop out a little bit. Turning those off again, you'll see that you know everything is the same exposure. And then when you do that, yeah, simple vignette. Okay, great. Then I create an adjustment layer. And let's take a look at this first adjustment layer and what it is doing. Uh, if I Let me see if I can get into the effects. Yeah, up here, get into the effects. And... I turn that guy on and it's doing something. Basically, I drop a looks on it, but I wanted to show you the, a, a different one first. So let me jump into the top. The top layer, I'm going to turn the other three. There's three layers here, as you can see. The top one uh, is probably where you could you, you should start. Uh, and this I learned from uh, from Camille. This is one of these are like kind of his go to uh, uh, instruments that he'll use or the effects that he'll put on. Let me turn that on and see what happens. Uh, we turn that on and let me see the opacity on it. The opacity is about at 50%. If I turn it completely off, it is doing something very subtle. Uh, let me turn it up just a little bit. Yeah, to get it a little bit larger for you so that you can see that. Uh, let's see here. There is that at 50%. Let me turn on the next one just to see what's going on. Okay, back to off. Yeah, so subtle, hard to even say what it is doing. Uh, basically, what I try to do with this is I, I, I want to bring down the saturation. Uh, you know, because one of the things about video is that when things are overly saturated, it starts to look like video. If you watch films, it's a lot more subtle. So if I just pump this up just for, you know, just to show you how crazy it is, if you pump it up, you see that everything is just really bright and saturated. That has video written all over it. So that's going to tone everything down, make the reds and the greens, you know, calm down. If I was better at this, I could probably pinpoint like the greens and just make the greens calm down and not everything. But I was happy with this. And then I like to add a sharpen because I shot this with the sharpening quite low. And I like, uh, you know, my images to look nice and tack sharp. So just added a little bit of that. Nothing too extreme there. Let's go on to the next adjustment layer. Uh, that is a look. So let me just turn that on. Now, if you go into that looks, if I hit the edit button here, it'll open up. We'll take a quick peek at it. And you can see that it's 
very wild. I mean, it's just way too much. It's overly done. But what I have going on here is I know that it, it's it's applied to curves. I put it's a, like a default look that I can't remember which one it is. But I remember just looking at it right now. What I liked about it is that it introduced a little bit of a coolness, a little bit of a, a, a lot, I should say, of a, of a saturation. Um, yeah, of a, a contrast. It added a lot of contrast. You can see these blacks are just completely gone. Um, so that was the two things here that I that I that I like. Now, obviously, I wouldn't keep this, right? This is nuts. So I click finish. It's in there, and here is the key. It's in an adjustment layer. It's going to go. It's going to affect everything that's below it. And if you if I if you check out the opacity, you'll see it. I'm only using it at twenty percent. If I bump that up to hundred percent, you'll see what it was trying to do. See, that's what it kind of looked like before. Now I don't want that. So twenty percent, just a little, just a subtle. Added. Let me turn it on and off again for us to see that. You see, it, it definitely gave us a nice curves so that the everything becomes a little bit more richer. I got a nice uh, contrasty image uh, with the saturation uh, low, right? We did that in the other in the first layer. So there we go. A little bit of contrast and cooling it off a little bit. Maybe adding a tint of uh, of, of green maybe to it. I think that was again. I, you know, I got a lot to learn still with all this stuff, but. I feel like I did a pretty good job here, and that was the first step. The next layer, I did another look. So let's just turn it on and see what happened. That punched it up a little bit, but I think one of the things that I liked here is that uh, the highlights kind of started to bloom a little bit. Let's look at that looks and see what I did there. Uh, yeah, you can see at the 100% level that the blue and the whites here really started to um, just just glow a little bit. So if I turn that off, you see they're kind of dull and now all of a sudden they kind of got a little shine to them, which I really like. So once I knew that I liked that aspect of it, I kept it and basically uh, did the same thing there. I Let's look at the opacity there and I brought that down to 35%. Again, if I did it at 100%, it would be wild. And his face just gets way too, uh, goes into the darks and, and everything. The, the, the blacks just get really crushed way too much. So I just brought it down, toned that down. That's it. That's the overall steps. Now, the one thing that I would say you need to do, because not all shots are are, are equal, right? Some of them are, um, are, are, are more exposed, less exposed. So they're going to react a little bit differently. If I nailed everyone exactly the same, then I could do this across the entire board as you see what's happening here. But what I do is on individual layers, I'll add an, an adjustment layer just, just for its... Uh, corresponding to just its own uh, a shot. So if you scroll down to on this one here, you'll see that it corresponds to uh, this little, let me find this little gap. I, you can see there's a gap here between this shot and that shot, right? And it's it's gonna show in that gap of this layer down here, that, that, that piece of video. But it's basically from here to there. So if we scroll up just to affect this one shot right there I added another adjustment layer but it's only gonna affect that shot not what's before not what's after because it as you can see it doesn't last that long now if we look at that what I've done is specifically for this shot there was some things that I needed to change actually for this one yeah there you go you can see that it's just for that shot but let's let's look at a different one real, real quick a different shot just to get a different flavor um, so here is this shot whoop Let's find one that's kind of just uh, stays right on it. Uh, okay, this is the wide shot here. So if we go to that shot, you saw all the layers that we did above. And now I decided that I wanted to affect this shot specifically. And let's look at this other, this last adjustment layer for it. Uh, I see I've done some more hue and saturation. We're going to turn it off completely and see what it does now. I can see what I did here. If you look at his face, I felt that it just you know went way too into the darks. Uh, turning that back on. Other things that I've noticed are is that I dropped the saturation a little bit more. So if we go up top, you'll see what I've done here. I basically, in the hue and saturation, I've dropped the saturation even a little bit more. If I take this off, you'll see that the reds are a little bit more red. The greens are a little green. If you focus on the reds and the green, you'll see that it gets just a little bit more dulled down. It's still green, it's still red, but this kind of, one of the things that I've noticed the, the, the top cinematographers say over and over again in the cine summits is that, you know, overly bright uh, mid section, you know, especially the reds and the greens are just a dead giveaway for video. If you watch movies, they're a lot calmer. They're not as exaggerated. So I brought that down 
uh, let's look at the what I do with the brightness and contrast. Uh, looks like I just added, yeah, I brought it down just a tiny bit. If we open that up, uh, brought it up a little bit. Let's see here. Yeah, just a tiny bit of uh, uh, brightness and definitely I added a little bit more contrast. That was the key. I think I, basically what I wanted there is for, let me look at it closely. Yeah, if you look a little bit into the blacks, you'll see that just a little bit more blacks disappear. Um, and that was a little tip that I got from Kamiz. You want to kind of, uh, you know, take away some of those uh, blacks to, to, to kind of let it fade into black and then it'll, and because of that, the focus will be a little bit more on the mids and, and, and highs. Uh, just again, just adding that contrast. Uh, in curves, I brought back uh, the overall, uh, the main thing I was focusing on was the face. Uh, yeah, so right here in this, in the kind of almost in this, uh, you know, really deep dark areas, I didn't like that I was losing a lot of his face, as you can see right there. So I brought back just a little bit and I tried to focus just on the face and the hat. You can see it comes back to life a little bit. So those are all the little minor adjustments that I did for this one clip. And the same goes, you know, down the road. Uh, for for any clip if we look at just maybe one more you saw the initial three here that was affecting all of them uh, But let's take a look at at uh, at a clip I think I want to take a look at let's say this close-up here and if you look at this adjustment layer same thing hue brightness and, and curves um, Turning it completely off You'll see let's see what the difference. Yeah to me that was just, it just wasn't matching the rest of the shots This is just overly bright and between all the combinations of that hue and saturation, it'll bring it down a little bit, make things disappear into the black. And this has a little bit, I might have overdone it to be honest, I might have uh, made it go a little bit too much into the blacks. But again, it's a, it's a learning process for me. I don't consider myself a colorist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I definitely wanted to, to uh, you know, enhance the, the image and to have that control in, in you know in my hand. So thanks to Kami for bringing that over hour long Cine Summit presentation where he taught me this uh, method, which is what he uses, and he's also refining it all the time. And obviously, it's all in the end. What you need to do is is go out and practice. When you get done hitting save on this, the beauty of it is it will uh, you will see it in uh, a you know it, uh, show come to life right here into in this um, uh, in, in the premiere. In the premiere, uh, you know, because it's linked together. So the minute you go back to premiere uh, to After Effects, do any adjustments, even just to this one clip, whatever adjustments you'll do, as you go back to uh, premiere, those will take effect. So that's the deal. That's the process. I wasn't trying to get into a deep how to color grade because that's not my uh, uh, forte. It's uh, you know, there's th plenty of people that that's what they do all day long, and we can learn from them. Camille's amazing at it and he has an eye for it, but it's definitely something that I would recommend everybody starting to do and starting to take control of and getting your hands on it. That's the system, that's the process. And of course, you can see that entire session if you want to uh, uh, own all the recordings of the Cine Summit. Feel free to go over there at vip.bigleaguecinesummit.com. Hit on the 2013 Winter Cine Summit and you will see all of the 12 presentations. You got over 10 hours of stuff over there. And it's well worth it. Just Kamiz alone is, uh, you know, is, uh, is mind blowing. So there you go. Uh, we will see you on the next post. Uh, make sure that you are signed up to find out when the next Cine Summits are coming up. When I make new posts, when I have announcements that you know, not everything makes it to the blog. Some things are on the Facebook page. You have to be uh, in enrolled to the email list, and we'll keep you posted. That's our goal: is to constantly give you. Uh, good content, whether it's me, whether I bring on other people, other amazing cinematographers giving us tips. Either way, whatever it takes for us to, to get to that next level. So see you on the next post and uh, take it easy.